ಶಲಾಖಾಯ ಚಾಕ್ಷೋರೋನ್ಮಿಲಿತಂ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭಿಸ್ಥಾಪಿತೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾಮಿ ಸ್ವಪದಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಂ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪ ಸಗ್ರಜತ ಸಹಗನ ರಘುನಥನ್ವಿತಂ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸದ್ವೈತ ಸವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ ಶ್ರೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣಪದ ಸಹಗನ ಲಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖಾನ್ವಿತ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತುತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಋಷಭಾನು ಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪೃಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾನಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚತ್ಯ ದೇಶತಾರಿಣಿ ಪಂಚಕಲ್ಪ ತರುಭ್ಯಶ್ಚ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧು ಪತಿತ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀ ವಾಸದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ಬೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ we are going to continue reading today from shrimad bhagavatam we are on uh, chapter 3 the canto i'm sorry canto 3 chapter 21 text 35 atha samprasthite shukle kardamo bhagwan rishi hi haste sma bindu sarasi tam kalam pratipalayan Translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta, Swami Shla Prabhupada. Then, after the departure of the Lord, the worshipful sage Kardama stayed on the bank of Bindu Sarovar, awaiting the time of which the Lord had spoken. Manu Syandhanam Asthaya Shata Kaumbha Parichadam ಆರೋಪ್ಯ ಸ್ವಾಂ ದುಹಿತರ ಸ ಭಾರ್ಯ ಪರ್ಯತನ್ ಮಹಿಂ ಸ್ವಯಂಭುವ ಮಧು ವಿತ್ ಇಸ್ ವೈಫ್ ಮೌಂಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಚಾರಿಯರ್ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡೆಕೋರೇಟೆಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಗೋಲ್ಡನ್ ಆರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಾಟರ್ ಆನ್ ಇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದೆಮ್ ಹಿ ಬಿಗ್ಯಾನ್ ಟ್ರಾವೆಲಿಂಗ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ದ ಅರ್ಥ್ ದ ಎಂಪರ್ ಮನು ಆಸ್ ದ ಗ್ರೇಟ್ ರೂಲರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಕುಡ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎಂಗೇಜ್ ಅನ್ ಏಜೆಂಟ್ ಟು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಅ ಸೂಟಬಲ್ ಹಸ್ಬೆಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಡಾಟರ್ but because he loved her just as a father should he himself left his state on a golden chariot with only his wife to find her a suitable husband hari krishna so tasmin shuddhan van ahani bhagwan yat sama dishat ಉಪಾಯದ ಆಶ್ರಮ ಪದ ಮುನೆ ಶಾಂತ ವೃತ್ತ ಓ ವಿದುರ್ ದೇ ರೀಚ್ ದ ಹರ್ಮಿಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸೇಜ್ ಹೂ ಆರ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟೆಡ್ ಹಿಸ್ ವಾವ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಸ್ಟೆರಿಟಿ ಆನ್ ದ ವೆರಿ ಡೇ ಫಾರ್ ಟೋಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ಲಾಡ್ ಯಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಭಗವತೋ ನೇತ್ರಾನ್ ನಿಯಾಪತನ್ ಅಶ್ರು ಬಿಂದವ ಕೃಪೆಯ ಸಂಪರಿತ ಪ್ರಪನೆ ಅರ್ಪಿತ್ಯಾಭೃಶ ತದ್ವೈ ಬಿಂದು ಸರೋ ನಾಮ ಸರಸ್ವತಿಯ ಪರಿಪ್ಲುತ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಶಿವಾಮೃತ ಜಲ ಮಹರ್ಷಿ ಘನ ಸೇವಿತ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ಲೇಕ್ ಬಿಂದು ಸರೋವರ್ ಫ್ಲಡೆಡ್ ಬೈ ದ ವಾಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ರಿವ
was resorted to by hosts of eminent sages. Its holy water was not only auspicious, but as sweet as nectar. It was called Bindu Sarovar because drops of tears had fallen there from the eyes of the Lord, who was overwhelmed by extreme compassion for the sage who had sought his protection. Gardama went austerities to gain the causeless mercy of the Lord. And when the Lord arrived there, he was so compassionate that in pleasure he shed tears, which became Bindu Sarovar. Bindu Sarovar is therefore worshipped by great sages and learned scholars because according to the philosophy of the absolute truth, the Lord and the tears from his eyes are not different. Just as drops of perspiration, which fell from the toe of the Lord, became the sac sacred Ganges, so teardrops from the transcendental eyes of the Lord became Bindu Sarovar. Both are transcendental entities and are worshipped by great sages and scholars. The water of Bindu Sarovar is described here as Shivamrita Jala. Shiva means curing. Anyone who drinks the water of Bindu Sarovar is cured, is cured of what? Of all material diseases. Similarly, anyone who takes his bath in the Ganges is also is relieved of all material diseases. So this material disease is not the physical disease, but also the material diseases thinking that we are the body and all the material desires. These claims are accepted by great scholars and authorities and are still being acted upon even in this fallen age of Kali. So Bindu Sarovar is the lake which became in the uh, Lord was so happy. The Lord was so happy to see Kardamamuni that he shed tears. I don't know if you all have not witnessed, you know, when you're so happy to meet someone, you start crying. And so in happiness. So Krishna is so, he has so much love for each of us. You know, otherwise, why would he cry? So he, because of his love, he loves so much. And now this became Bindu Sarovar. And Has it got to do with Lord Shiva or something? It says Shiva means curing. Curing. Uh, no, it means Shiva method because Shiva also means auspicious. Auspicious. Okay. Yeah. So in that way, that's the reason it's said. Uh, I don't know if there's any other reference, but here the reference is given that uh, it's, it's uh, the teardrops from the eyes of Lord Vishnu. Mm -hmm. And I'm so just wondering, like, you know, Shiva, and then we have yeah. Shiva, not so. So mm. here in the, the reference that is given here, yeah, auspicious. Shiva means auspicious. Okay. Yeah. So Lord Shiva is auspicious. He's a pure devotee of the Lord. Right. Yeah. Oh. So wherever he is, has to be all auspiciousness if he is worshipped in the in the proper manner, if he's approached in the proper manner, he makes everything auspicious. Also, I was hearing how he makes, he's so compassionate that he's waiting to give bodies even to the ghosts and the spirits, you know. They are following him and then he's so compassionate, he wants to give them the bodies. And so he makes arrangements for them also to receive. So Lord Shiva is very, very kind. Very kind. So here the reference is Bindu Sarovar that if once you take a bath over there, you're cured of all material diseases. Now we may physically not be able to go to such places, but we can visit them mentally also. It's the same. We can get the same result if we want. Punya Dhruma Lata Jalehe Kujat Punyam Ragad Vijay Sarvartu Falap Pushpadhyam Vanaraji Shriyanvitam. The shore of the lake was surrounded by clusters of pious trees and creepers, rich in fruits and flowers of all seasons, that afforded shelter to pious animals and birds, which uttered various cries. It was adorned by the beauty of groves of forest trees. It is stated here that Bindu Sarovar was surrounded by pious trees and birds. 
as there are different classes of men in human society, some pious and virtuous, and some impious and sinful. So also among trees and birds, they are pious and impious. Trees which do not bear nice fruit or flowers are considered impious. And birds which are very nasty, such as crows, are considered impious. In the land surrounding Bindu Sarovar, there was not a single impious bird or tree. Every tree bore fruits and flowers, and every bird sang the glories of the Lord. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So it seems even among trees and birds, there are uh, pious and impious animals and trees. And trees which bear nice flowers and fruits are pious. And those who don't are called impious. So it depends then, you know, if we are supposed to become a tree also, then depends if we have been pious, then we will become pious trees. So intricate laws of karma is we can't even begin to understand. Mata dvija ganer gushtam, mata brahmara vibramam, mata barhi nata topam, the area resounded with the notes of overjoyed birds. Intoxicated bees wandered there. Intoxicated peacocks proudly danced. And merry cuckoos called one another. The beauty of the pleasant sounds heard in the area surrounding Lake Bindu Sarovar is described here. After drinking honey, the black bees became maddened and they hummed in intoxication. Merry peacocks danced just like actors and actresses, and merry cuckoos called their mates very nicely. So it seems like a very nice, pleasant environment. You know, I don't know if the young people nowadays would call it pleasant though, you know, because city people, city people, you know, we become so attracted to just city life. So then I don't know. <laughs> If the young people who are not used to uh, much of the nature, how would they? Um, yeah, they, they don't appreciate. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. But I surely find it pleasing. I don't know if I would be able to live in a forest. I don't think so. <laughs> but it sounds but very pleasing. I think that uh, even the young generation of today appreciates the nature a lot because they are doing a lot of hiking. They are going on the places to discover new adventures. So I think they appreciate the nature, definitely. Hmm. Okay, that's good. Then. Yeah, because they, they like beaches. So then that's the part of nature. Oh yeah, beaches, yeah. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves beaches. Everybody loves uh, even rainforest, Amazon. They, they have adventurous life. So I think the young generation might not have that thought that we should appreciate and this is the nature of God, but they love it. They okay. love being part of it. Oh, and they yeah, because how we have beautiful photographers who are taking the, the mm. species photograph, the birds, the flowers, mm. how the flower show in Taiwan is so successful every year mm. because the young generation is being instilled to love it from the day one. Mm. Parents take them so they know that flower is such a beautiful thing. Mm. Nice. So, yes, I think that they appreciate but do the they problem, appreciate it the as problem? God's creation? Uh, Krishna's they, creation. <laughs> um, like they know, I mean, what I think, I mean, this is just again a speculation and we should not talk on that, but I think that they just see that it's so beautiful mm. and they feel happy being there. Okay, that's good also. So that means that something is there. Nature is good. Yeah, yeah. everybody loves nature. Very good. Yeah. yeah, that's encouraging. Kadamba Champak. Shoka, Karanja, Bakula, Shane, Kunda, Mandara, Kuta, Jess, Chitat, Poter, Alankritam, Karan, Dave, Plavir, Hamshe, Kura, Rare, Jala, Kuku, Tahe, Sara, Shes, Chakra, Vakescha, Chakore, Valguku, Chitam. Lake Bindu Sarovar was adorned by flowering trees such as Kadamba, Champaka, Ashoka, Karanja, Bakula, Asana, Kunda, Mandara, Kutaja, and young mango trees. 
The air was filled with the pleasing notes of Karandava ducks, plovers, swans, ospreys, waterfowl, cranes, chakravakas, and chakoras. For most of the trees, flowers, fruits, and birds mentioned here as surrounding Bindu Sarovar Lake, English synonyms cannot be found. All the trees mentioned are very pious in that they produce a nice aromatic flower such as the champaka, kadamba, and bakula. The sweet sounds of waterfowl and cranes made the surrounding area as pleasant as possible and created a very suitable spiritual atmosphere. So he's in a very nice, pleasing spiritual atmosphere almost. Tathaiva harine krode shwa vid. Gavya Kunjare, Gopucher Haribir Marker, Nakule Nabihir, Nabibir Britam. Its shores abounded with deer, boars, porcupines, gavayas, elephants, baboons, lions, monkeys, mongooses, and musk deer. Musk deer are not found in every forest, but only in places like Bindu Sarovar. They are always intoxicated by the aroma of musk secreted from their navels. Gavayas, the species of cow mentioned herein, bear a bunch of hair at the end of their tails. This bunch of hair is used in temple worship to fan the deities. Gavayas are sometimes called chamaris, and they are considered very sacred. In India, there are still gypsies of forest mercantile people who flourish by trading kasturi or musk and the bunches of hair from the chamaris. These are always in great demand for the higher classes of Hindu population and such business still goes on in large cities and villages in India. So the mention is of gavayas, cows with a, some bunch of hair at the end of the tail and uh, the musk deer, the musk deer. Pravishya tattirtha varam adi raja sahatma jaha dadarsha munim asinam tasmin huta huta shanam vidyotamanam vidyotam manam vapusha tapasi ugra uja chiram Natik Shamam Bhagvataha Snigda Panga Balokanat Tad Vyahra Tamrita Kala Piyusha Shravane Nacha Pramsham Padma Palashaksham Jatilam Chiravasasam Upasam Shritya Malinam Yathar Hanam Amaskritam Entering that most sacred spot with his daughter and going near the sage, the first monarch, Swayambhuva Manu, saw the sage sitting in his hermitage, having just propitiated the sacred fire by pouring oblations into it. His body shone most brilliantly. Though he had engaged in austere penance for a long time, he was not emaciated, for the Lord had cast his affectionate sidelong glance upon him and he had also heard the nectar flowing from the moon like words of the Lord. The sage was tall, his eyes were large like the petals of a lotus and he had matted locks on his head. He was clad in rags. Swayambhuva Manu approached and saw him to be somewhat soiled like an unpolished gem. So just uh, the, the, the Muni, Gardama Muni, although he was doing his austerities, penances, you know, severe austerities, because he had darshan of the Lord, the Lord had looked at him. So he appeared fit and strong and beautiful, not like morose. You know, he, why? Because the Lord had seen him. He had seen the Lord and he had heard the Lord speaking to him. The Lord was speaking to him, personally standing in front of him and speaking to him. And so he had heard the nectar. 
So imagine anyone who sees the Lord, you know, the consciousness has to be like pure, you know. So here are some descriptions of a brahmachari yogi in the morning. The first duty of a brahmachari seeking spiritual elevation is Huta Hutashana to offer sacrificial oblations to the Supreme Lord. Those engaged in brahmacharya cannot sleep until seven or nine o'clock in the morning. They must rise early in the morning, at least one and a half hours before the sun rises and offer oblations or in this age, they must chant the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna. So the brahmachari, they wake up in Brahma Murta and do their, uh, their sacrifices. And the age in this age of Kali, the sacrifice is chanting the Hare Krishna Ma Mantra. And it's recommended not only for the brahmacharis, but whoever we are brahmachari, graha, svanapra, sannyasi, man, woman, and you know, anyone, anyone, we are recommended to chant Hare Krishna mantra as referred to by Lord Chaitanya. Kalau naste eva naste, eva naste eva gatir anyatha. There is no other alternative, no other alternative, no other alternative in this age to chanting the holy name of the Lord. So repeat it three times. It's repeated three times. There is no uh, error. But just to, just to bring to our notice the importance that, hey, you need to wake up, sleeping soul, wake up. You need to chant the holy name. You need to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. The brahmachari must rise early in the morning and after placing himself should chant the holy name of the Lord from the very features of the sage. It appeared that he had undergone great austerities. That is the sign of one observing brahmacharya, the vow of celibacy. If one lives otherwise, it will be manifest in the lust visible in his face and body. So just by looking at Gardamamuni, one could see that, yes, he is a brahmachari. He is following his celibate vows. The word vidyotamanam indicates that the brahmachari feature showed in his body. That is the certificate that one has undergone great austerity in yoga. A drunkard or smoker or sex monger can never be eligible to practice yoga. Generally, yogis look very skinny because of their not being comfortably situated. But Kardamamuni was not emaciated for he had seen the Supreme Personality of Godhead face to face. So if we are following the yoga path, then we have to follow the do's and the don'ts. You know, do, we can't be engaging in uh, illicit activities and then um, undergoing the yogic process. But also we can see that to, to, get, to get perfection by yoga, uh, ashtanga yoga is not recommended in this age of Kali. And so we are recommended to perform bhakti yoga. So what does emaciated mean? Emaciated this? like, uh, you know, looking skinny, starved, you know, looking, mm -hmm. yeah, because when you do austerities, then you become very thin, you've not eaten well, you look weak, like that, no? but he was not looking emaciated because he saw the Lord personally. So here the word snigdha panga lokanat means that he was fortunate enough to see the Supreme Lord face to face. He looked healthy. Yeah, so emaciated means not looking healthy, you know, looking sickly. And, but he looked healthy because he had directly received the nectarian sound vibrations from the lotus lips of the personality of Godhead. Similarly, one who hears the transcendental sound vibration of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, also improves in health. So one who hears the transcendental sound vibration of the holy name of the Lord, Hare Krishna, the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is a transcendental sound vibration. It's not material. It is not material. We have actually seen that many brahmacharis and grihasthas connected 
with the International Society for Krishna Consciousness have improved in health and a luster has come to their faces, it is essential that a brahmachari engaged in spiritual advancement look very healthy and lustrous. The comparison of the sage to an unpolished gem is very appropriate. Even if a gem is taken from a mine, looks uh, just taken from a mine, looks unpolished, the luster of the gem cannot be stopped. Similarly, although Kardama was not properly dressed and his body was not properly, properly cleansed, his overall appearance was gem-like. So Kardama Muni, he was doing austerities. And so of course he, you know, when you're doing austerities, you, you can't be uh, uh, like, you know, he, he, he had not cleaned his body properly, but yet one, just by looking at him, a person could see that, oh, he, this is a great personality, he's a great yogi, you know, just by looking at him. So the comparison is given to a gem, even though the gem has not been polished, you know that this is a, this is a gem, a diamond, you know just taken, not cleaned up, but you know, oh, this is valuable, very valuable. Mm, unpolished. Yeah. Unpolished, yeah. Mm. And then just by a little polishing can shine completely. So, ato tajam upayatam nirdevam pranatam pranatam puraha saparyaya parga ranat pratinan Dhyanu Rupaya, seeing that the monarch had come to his hermitage and was bowing down before him, the sage greeted him with benediction and received him with due honor. Emperor Swayambhubamanu not only approached the cottage of dried leaves possessed by the hermit Kardama, but also offered respectful obeisances unto him. Similarly, it was the duty of the hermit to offer blessings to kings who used to approach his hermitage and the jungle. So Swayambhuva Manu is the emperor of the world, and, but he bowed down before Karadama Muni, and the Muni uh, blessed him. So they both are playing their, perf their roles perfectly. A king should bow down to the, no matter how great he is, he should bow down before a saintly person, and then it's the duty of the saintly person to offer benediction. So they are playing their part perfectly. We stop here for today, I'm not sure. Or we can just read this. Grihitar hanam ashinam samyatam prinayan munihi smaran bhagavad adesham iti ahash lakshanaya gira. After receiving the sage's attention, the king sat down and was silent. Recalling the instructions of the Lord, Kardama then spoke to the king as follows, delighting him with sweet accents. So tomorrow we can hear what is the conversation between Kardama and Swayambhava Manu. Would anyone want to add anything or comment? No, all good. Stop here. Thank you so much for reading in and listening in and joining in. Shrimad Bhagavatam ki che Shri Prabhupada ki che Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.